Hello again, today we have another device review, very soon after the previous one, the Droid DNA. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Verizon LG Spectrum 2. I was put on the list to receive this device probably several months ago. Honestly, when the, when the Droid DNA and the Spectrum both were announced a while back, uh, I was put on the list with Verizon to get them, and it just showed up a couple of weeks ago. So that's a thing. In terms of the specs of the device, it has a 4.7 inch True HD, which apparently means 1280 by 720 IPS display, a 2150 milliamp hour battery. The back part of the case is apparently compatible with wireless charging, though I do not have a wireless charger to test it with. It's running Android version 4.0 Ice Cream Sandwich. I think it's actually 404. It has the Qualcomm Snapdragon S4 1.5 gigahertz dual core crate processor. It has one gigabyte of built-in RAM, 16 gigabytes of built-in storage, as well as an 8 megapixel rear-facing camera, and I think the front facing is 1.3, though the specs list I've got does not mention it. And it's compatible across a bunch of different networks, CDMA, LTE, GSM, so realistically, sounds pretty good. Moving on to the consumer review type thing. I've been using this as my pretty much daily driver device for the last couple of weeks. I used it for about a week and a half solid as my daily driver, and I was going back and forth between it and the Droid DNA the week before that. The first thing to talk about as far as I'm concerned is the aesthetic of the device and as you can probably tell from the video I'm showing you kind of boxy kind of thick not really a very sleek and subtle device or anything like the DNA was honestly it is very chunky but at the same time built very well it feels like it's very sturdy and very solid in the hand and that little bit of extra weight and extra thickness that you get with it it does make it feel like a good, high-quality, strong, sturdy device. In terms of processing power, however, as I mentioned, it has a dual-core Snapdragon S4. That's supposed to be a pretty decent processor. It is still a last-generation processor. And honestly, running Ice Cream Sandwich instead of running Jelly Bean, there were lags all over the place. Using this as a daily driver, I found more often than not, just comparing it to my, my Galaxy Nexus, which is running CyanogenMod, which has some performance issues of its own, this was definitely uh, quite a bit of a slowdown for me. Now that said, it's not the high-end device, it's not a flagship device, so it's not going to be touted as such. But honestly, the reason that I wanted to look at this one was it seemed kind of comparable to the Nexus 4, and that it is not. The Optimus G is comparable to the Nexus 4. I thought the Spectrum and Spectrum 2 were supposed to be as well, but like I said, no. When doing average daily tasks, it would get the job done, but it would take a little bit longer, especially when you're going back to the home screen, because, again, not running Jelly Bean does not have Project Butter on it, so it's just slow on the animations, and it's slow on transitions, and, and it's honestly a pity to say it. In terms of running the applications, of course, the majority of applications are going to run just fine. A dual core will do the grand majority of what you want to do nowadays. Again, it might just take a little while longer to accomplish it. It might take a little longer to start up a game or start up an application, but once you get into it, the majority of what you want to do is going to be able to be accomplished with the dual core nowadays. Honestly, there's a lot of the stuff you can do with a single core. If I wanted to, I could pull out my Droid X and continue working on things if I wanted to and it's a single core one gigahertz processor. But at the same time, that lack of speed when compared to some other devices on the market, eh. so that's performance, pretty much middle of the road. And it is, again, a middle of the road device, so that's kind of to be expected. In terms of battery life, decently admirable. Uh, I've had better, I've had worse, again, kind of middle of the road. When left alone to its own devices, it will last for in the neighborhood of three to four days on a single charge without, you know, really touching it or really doing much to it. Just the occasional checking of email, put it back down, leave it alone. But that's not really how you're going to use the device. Again, as I said with previous reviews, all day usage in this one, no real issue. Heavy usage, and it would get down to probably 30% battery life by the end of the day. So it is capable of making it through a solid day where I work, which is in a black hole, so there's no cell service and battery life is horrible. Just sitting around the house with it, you can definitely make it through an entire day with no issue. Again, the camera quality is kind of okay. It's a cell phone camera, not going to be the best thing in the world, but again, it's not terrible. It's usable footage. Let me go ahead and give you a quick back and forth with the front and rear facing cameras and then a couple of stills from the camera as well. Okay, and this is a video from the rear-facing camera. This is the 8 megapixel rear-facing camera. Uh, it says that it's a 1080p full HD. It does not mention having any sort of video stabilization, so I'm just holding this with one hand and kind of winging it, hoping that it works out. 
Uh, from a quick look at it, it looks like the video is a little bit grainy, even in these very bright lights that I'm in front of. And now we're taking a look at the front-facing camera so I can actually see myself in the screen. The color quality looks all right. The image looks a bit grainy. Again, I'm in front of these studio lights, so it shouldn't be realistically, but who really knows at this point. Hopefully the audio will sound decent and the uh, there is no motion blur that I can really see, so that's definitely uh, an improvement over some other ones that I've seen. And of course, as far as the rest of the camera is concerned, using it from a still camera point of view, the zero, zero shutter lag and advanced optics definitely seem to be coming into play for the stills. They look very respectable. Sorry, I've still got little bobblehead Yoda over here from the images I was taking. Uh, though in the lighting that I've got, they look very nice. I will have to try some outdoors as well. I think I captured some already that I'll put in here as if I have them. But all in all, for photography stuff, seems to be all right. I'm sure low lighting, not gonna be great. But still, it's a cell phone camera, it's got a small sensor, that's what you're gonna expect. Yeah, a couple of quick tests here in slightly lower lighting showed that there was a lot of grain, a lot of noise, and a lot of just general image blur in lower lighting. So again, that's to be expected, cell phone camera. And of course, you can't do a phone review without talking about call quality. I've talked on this quite a bit. I've actually done conference calls on it, sounded just fine, worked appropriately. I was able to be heard just fine, so really no issues there. A lot of that has to do with the network where I am. Very good quality here in my home, and that's where I've done most of these conference calls. And of course the network, constantly backed by Verizon's 4G LTE network if you're in an area that has 4G, so it does have those extremely fast speeds if you're in a place where those are available. So all in all, and to kind of wrap this up, this device, very much middle of the road. If I had to give it a grade, I would probably give it like a C plus because performance is just okay. I might give it a B minus, honestly, because very usable as a daily driver, but still a very thick, very chunky phone that's kind of slow, kind of dated, but it is, again, very usable with decent battery life. And the good thing about it, this back comes off, so you can actually pop it off and put a new battery in if you are so inclined. There you go, you've got the 3.8 volt a lithium-ion battery that is easily user replaceable as well as a micro sim slot micro SD slot very good stuff there and at the two-year contract price of $79.99 definitely not a bad price although for just a little bit more you can get something higher in something newer I know the droid DNA I just reviewed if it's still available on their site is something like $199 so that's a little bit more but you do get a lot more phone out of that but still if you're in the market for a new device and you're not wanting to pay $200 $300 for one and you're on contract this one might not be a bad thing to look at if you're a fan of the LG version of Android, the LG look and feel on top of Android. Very usable, very nice display, but it's just a little slow, it's a little older, a little dated. So, not the best, not the worst. It's alright. Anyway, that's going to be about all from me for today. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.